And what I've come to understand is that there are these incredible pictures that contain all the information of a set of equations that are related to string theory. And it's even more bizarre than that because when you then try to understand these pictures, you find out that buried in them are computer codes just like the type that you find in a browser when you go surf the web. You're saying your attempt to understand the fundamental operations of nature leads you to a set of equations that are indistinguishable from the equations that drive search engines and browsers on yeah, our computers. That is correct. Boom, what's up everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakyan. Super pumped to be talking about simulation theory. We have Ryan geis Bozajan joining us on the show. Hello. Hello, brother. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. Very grateful, very blessed. We're finally landing this episode together after doing a lot of circling around each other. Very pumped to be talking about simulation theory with you. For those that don't know, Ryan's background, Ryan has spent 15 years in doing visual effects, computer generated imagery. He's done a lot of simulation to screen work at LucasArts, at Sony and other co companies. He's a partner at Keras Capital Management right now. He's also strategic advisor at Versus, which is architecting the spatial web. He is doing lots of work in the emerging tech space. So this is the perfect topic for us. And let's dive into this from what we just listened to. We just listened to this beautiful dialogue about the codified universe, the codified world. And it's the 20th anniversary of the matrix. Mm. And it's crazy that how well that illustrated what we're about to talk about. Mm -hmm. Launch us into this. Yeah, I mean, it's a beautiful, appropriate time to honor that legacy that the Wachowskis were so aptly able to transmit. Um, very inspired by Philip K. Dick and a whole kind of lineage of Gnostic uh, tradition behind that, uh, kind of wrapped into this technosis uh, frame that we have now. To, it's it's uh, Eric Davis. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a paradigm shift. It's a really amazing opportunity, I think, to, um, to evolve, to integrate and evolve our model um, of reality and uh, aptly simulation on the simulation here and we're working with versus on the simulation within the simulation. So there's a bit of this like recursive fractal stuff I'm sure we'll get into. Yes. Um, but yeah, the Wachowskis, they, they threw out the narrative frame uh, right alongside Wilbur, um, Ken Wilbur working with integral theory on a kind of philosophical transpersonal framework. And uh, yeah, it's, it's an incredible time to honor this incredible transition period, the opportunity um, coming through this, this transrational phase of recognizing the simulation nature of this game. And taking us all the way back on a big history perspective, we have all these like archaic means of first discovering language and art and communication, these initial inventions. And then we have this, this crazy, you know, relig the period of religion and spirituality and that type of growth, mm -hmm. a lot of the self work process, the inward process, and now this most recent technological explosion that's occurred that has taken us into the digital world, which is all on like the objective science and mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. um, so now we're kind of merging, you know, that's one of the other things about this, this transrational as you describe it, teach us about this, this transrational of the objective and the subjective dualism. That touches a little bit on, on, uh, Wilbur's framework with integral theory, and uh, it's it's kind of a, a, a synthesizing system. In what he, what he Aurobindo was another in that lineage um, of using this kind of a, a framework to to map an inclusive kind of holistic uh, mapping of or cartography of uh, reality through like a philosophical framework. Um, so many of our even you know most incredibly brilliant. <coughs> Philosophers and and uh, and thinkers have contributed very powerful um, types of ideology or ways of thinking, but they've been kind of partial. Um, as much as they've been like true and, and there's been great power in certain kinds of thinkers, they've been partial. They haven't really mapped the the whole of actuality, as as Wilbur kind of was carrying a thread from. Um, um, 
Uh, it's escaping me right now, but a lot of people say that it's very elusive. The when you're trying to you're trying to explain the code of all that is, it's a very elusive thing to try and be able to sure, explain. Sure, sure, right? and 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 yet we're also moving into this period where it is uh, automating itself, and yeah. we can get into that yeah. more as well. But what what Wilbur was doing when you were talking about like the the Cartesian dualism, the interior, the exterior there being these uh, times um, that we're looking at through spiral dynamics as kind of pre-rational mapping of the interior of consciousness in a way. And then you could look at the, from kind of the modern and postmodern phases as this, this process of mapping the exterior, the objective world, yes. the subject-object dualism, that sort of thing. So primary dualism with Descartes, Wilbur has kind of expanded that into pluralistic uh, systems. So you have the, the left side is the uh, interior, the subjective side, the right side is the exterior, objective side, and um, the bottom quadrants, so there's, you know, singular up above, so upper left is interior, singular, mm -hmm. uh, the eye, mm -hmm. and then upper right is like the outer, you could say like the body, and that, you know, which would be the it, like my body is a thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then below those two quadrants, you would, you would say the lower left is like the inner subjective, like the we, the collective consciousness, unconsciousness, however you want to look at that. And then the outer lower right is the, uh, the systems, right? So the kind of plural systems of the exterior. So systems theory, all of that. So this is kind of like a ontological compass you could look at. That's sort of an elaboration and continuation of a lot of philosophical work and a lot of spiritual work synthesizing together. That's just sort of the compass part of it. And from there, there's lots of maps of, um, that, that Wilbur's set in particular with integral theory has done an incredible job of like a kind of compatibilism for the interior traditions and meaning systems and the exterior sort of mechanics, right? Like bringing that all together. He wrote amazing, amazing work, many different things, but one of them is even called The Marriage of Sense and Soul. So that the ethos behind is very much how do we sort of reconcile the mapping of the whole of actuality. Yeah. Um, the inner and, it kinda, and the outer. What's that? Yeah, yeah, the inner and the outer, and like all the systems that have evolved since then, the pluralistic, you know, what we've learned from postmodernism with the lower left, and then the, uh, the kind of systems theories angles on the lower right, bringing all that together. And um, yeah, it's created this really comprehensive framework that, you know, has been a, a vital pillar for the, the realm of transpersonal psychology and like developing yeah. that, which, is, you know, people are you know, continuing the Jungian work of the collective unconscious and then also like meta lifetime work with uh, near death experiences and plant medicine journeys and all that kind of stuff. Yes. It's that's where it's sort of expanding right now. Yes. So it's kind of growing out of Wilbur's sort of um, kind of the baseline, I think, framework for the time. Uh, the plant medicines are really yes. coming up big in terms of people experiencing the subtle realms in ways that were not as accessible before, except for these traditions that held those lines. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that whole side of it is opening up in terms of like the experiencing of all of this, which is a little bit different than the orthodoxies of the religions. Like the religions were mapping the similar territories, um, but people, they were mediating them also. People weren't really able to access experiencing it for themselves. Mm -hmm. Huge shift there. Mm -hmm. And the parallels with that on the interior, mm -hmm. alongside these developments with simulation theory coming out is like a, a serious, you know, yes. like it's being considered, you know, in philosophical, but also scientific circles now, Correct. you know, with Bostrom's paper and like, you know, it's getting all kinds of press out there. It's got a resonance and I think it's going to continue to have an efficacy in, in that area, which again, with the interior experiencing of the medicines and or other types of altered states alongside the exterior correlates of, you know, information and, and blueprints and things yes. that are coming through all of this together is kind of, I think, a continuation of the mapping project of the transrational period. So the period after, you know, kind of post-conventional rationality that is able to include and transcend, as, as Wilbur's mm -hmm. heuristics have, have beautifully presented, um, the continuing of, of this process and more detailed cartography. And, and it's it kind of oscillating through these interior experiences into exterior forms of like, you know, literal subordinate software encoding, right? Like with the internet and AI and all these things that are evolving that we're working on now, yes, yes. it's like the layer of that within the game. Yeah, yeah. That's really taken off. 
So we have the we have the internal mapping that has been been done through the spiritual practices, religious practices. Now this this psychedelic uh, uh, democratization yeah. and renaissance, yeah. Yeah. and then we have a this the, so it's a simultaneous spiritual awakening on the inner workings at the same time as we're having an explosive exponential technology renaissance where these theories of superintelligence, artificial general intelligence passing of the torch from biological to non-biological intelligence and embedding consciousness in that so that there can be kids in Disneyland as it you know as experience qualia as as it goes so you know so tell us about that trajectory with this torch pass to the superintelligence because simulation theory what the matrix has done and the popularization of this culture has made it much easier for us to to believe in what is this passing of the torch? Sure, exactly, and that's part of the, some of the fruit of the narrative paradigm, and and then again, all these things that are kind of coming up in in science and philosophy at this point. I mean, one thing that's interesting about it is, is you could look at a potential disembodied trajectory for this, where it's simulations birthing simulations on. That may actually be what some are navigating as the dimensional stack coming down, vibrating down into three D. This is getting a little abstract, but like some are experiencing that, and there's higher dimensional. You know, we're working with all kinds of brilliant minds. Klee's uh, been doing some really incredible work, and um, and others, Garrett Lisi, and then there's others that I've been working with um, <coughs> in emerging tech, leveraging higher dimensional vector spaces for data storage and so on. And and there's seems to be some correlation with these things. We seem to be able to be experiencing higher dimensionality when we. Um, when we're navigating these altered states, and then uh, we obviously have this kind of denser 3D sort of layer of the game. And then we have the subordinate uh, dimensionality that's expanding outward through virtuality within it. So it almost looks like an axis coming down in vibration Mm -hmm. and dimensionality and density, and then going the other direction, right? Up higher and higher and higher through virtuality now. Question is, is that we, we're, we're experiencing a lot of like collateral impacts too of the disembodied uh, potential of a lot of this. So there are some that um, many of us are drawn to simulation media, these things, but we can also see how some of this stuff has been impacting our embodied health and well-being. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of blowback, and I think very importantly, um, and there's really amazing people in our network like Emily Bush, um, who's also involved in Versus, and she, there's some that are just really focused on helping to keep this, this stuff from going into uh, such a disembodied um, kind of fracture that it's colliding with other aspects of our being. So there's a question about whether yeah. this is something that's gonna kind of happen in waves and that like kind of going back to an idea that we are quantum computers already and uh, we're, we're you know, bio, wetware, quantum computers, and that maybe we have this, this kind of, we can talk about this again later, but this window of time where the subordinate simulation has been evolving in front of us and getting to this point where now it's rolling out into 3D with what we're doing with versus in the spatial web um, and may evolve from silicon into other forms and substrates, what's going on with DNA computing and quantum and all this. It could be that there's this transhumanist you know, kind of window yeah. where uh, rather than going, you know, it, there's a disembodied um, period maybe, but that we're also supposed to be kind of re, like sort of pulling it back into embodiment. We have a period of time where we can work on it sort of outside of ourselves in a way, and that maybe in time it, it's all going to evolve back into one sort of stream. We're going to, computing is going to go denser and denser and denser down to, you know, DNA, which we're already doing. George Church mm-hmm. has been, you know, encoding and decoding data just in and out of DNA totally aside from the, you know, biological, you know, um, the life functions of it, just as like a, a, a piece of like hard drive, you know, yeah. you know, using it like a hard drive or memory. So that with all the synthetic biology stuff he's been tracking and like the whole transhumanist, you know, movement and all that kind of stuff, it could be that we have a window yeah. of time to kind of, I don't know, like refine yes. uh, our values, our development, all yes. of the things that we want to kind of continue on through, like a large macro generational yes. torch handing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we, we've, we have this 
this this period now where where you you know you're you're calling it this you know this window this transhumanist window um, this the, the the passing of the torch what codes are we going to embed in the superintelligence which codes will prevail across the countries across the governments across the companies whose substrates will be the ones that people enter in on all of these interesting questions and how do we embed the how do we have discourse around which values to embed these are all very pressing questions questions and one of the things that versus is doing which I think you know you should explain mm -hmm. is you know we we never really had a identification system for humans when this evolutionary experiment first started it was kind of like grunt the name and name was kind of the thing but you wouldn't really leave go too far away then now it's you know you have these digital social profiles that anyone can find from around the world mm -hmm. you have an identifier to your name with mm -hmm. your like social number your social credit all these types of things and so now with what Versus is doing, it's, it's, it's taking us into this transhumanist period with, the, with architecting the, the, infra, the, the infrastructure, the, yeah, the, infrastructure, yeah the, the web infrastructure, IoT, mm -hmm. sensors, mm -hmm. identification tags, mm -hmm. open data flows. Mm -hmm. So yeah, teach us about how you guys the are doing Spatial web. Yeah, yeah. So, so far, uh, maybe I could just, should I jump back to like the continu continuum of simulation, like the, yeah, well, the subordinate simulation and how it's evolved into the internet kind of thing? Yeah, yes, and then we'll go up from that to into the versus simulation. where it's going, yeah. Yeah, into versus and then into the simulation, yeah, yeah. So, you know, we can look back at the, the kind of birth of the symbolic order. Once we started encoding data, you know, there's oral traditions and so on, but when we started kind of, you know, scrawling on the cave walls and the, the paintings and so on, we started externalizing data is the first, you know, like external data storage formats. And then, you know, so art has been kind of the, con the sort of continuum of the mediums of art subordinate within. So like the game with, if this is a 3D game, then like we have this encoding stream of information that's been stored externally in this evolution of mediums, this continuum of simulation. I think Brett Leonard's talked a lot about this as well. He's another amazing visionary in the space of virtuality. So there's been all these mediums of art, music, and so on, and then, you know, they kind of build up, and then obviously when they get to, you know, photography, then, it, then you have this grand synthesis with uh, motion pictures and, and yeah. media, yeah. where we get this other huge paradigm integration that, you know, combines multiple senses, multiple lenses of, you know, audio, video together, and, you know, there's a certain kind of, like, almost magical properties of what happens with those syncing in terms of immersion. Yes. So this whole process is kind of, it's, it seems driven by like deepened immersion in, in one respect to the point that you can then get all these, you know, kind of primate bodies that are hypnotized staring at walls Correct. for hours on end yeah. at this 2D projection, right? So this dimensional projection thing is, is sort of uh, definitely something alongside certain kinds of fractal patterns and scale invariance and distribution and so on. But the dimensional projection is a huge part of this thing that's always kind of been there, right? Yeah. So that whole kind of thing is evolving within and then has gotten to a point where that's the mimetics evolving over time alongside our genetics into the external so that's the external objective data encoding side of the mimetic yeah mm -hmm. the mimetic layer mm -hmm. so all these layers whether it be like biosphere new sphere this is other stuff wilbur did incredible mapping with but these and these are very macro categories of course so like physiosphere biosphere new sphere they they have interior and exterior correlates right so like there's all the stuff that's going on in our subjective mimetics, the things that are being processed in our minds individually, collectively, et cetera. And then this is the externalization, the, the data storage layer of that yes. is, is this whole continuum of virtual simulated mediums, right? And so that both like comes from this layer. It's, it's like it, there's the 3D gross layer that information moves through into that subordinate simulation, whether it be a f painting, photograph, movie, you know, media, game. So that whole development right there is, we're like filtering into what ends up there and then it also feeds back very powerfully, obviously. Very powerfully. Exactly. It's a closed loop feedback. It's like a, it's a, it's a projection of our limbic system is the interwebs. And then as Musk said, and that's a straight, yeah, feedback that's super powerful. So the things that make it through the gateways of wherever things come from, right? So that in some circles, there, are, there aren't a whole lot of great explanations other than 
what have been coming through the religions and the plant medicines as to where ideas come from, yeah, information yeah. is coming from. Um, those are some of the best that we've got, and this is an attempt to sort of reintegrate them and synthesize them from when, you know, thousands of years ago when they didn't have anything other than like books to then create a metaphor of Akashic libraries or something like that. You know, books were the only medium of the time or something that you could say that could be, you know, articulated. Now we have games and internets and, you know, movie, all these things. And so whatever that thing is of the time, we can then access. And now it's at a point where it's actually creating actual simulation within the simulation, right? Where it's kind of, you know, gaining some autonomy and um, we continuously see that coming with AI, this, this window that we have with that. But basically, you know, getting to this point where the, the, the subordinate continuum has evolved now through that media layer into this internet of basically an information piping system yeah, yeah. still lends through 2D screens, right? Still through 2D screens. And yeah. now with Versus, we are rolling through that into the spatial internet yes. that is a full stack of emerging technologies that is, is, is digitizing space, not just media and documents, but like space itself. Yes. And then within that infrastructure, the things that AI and other, and other areas of emerging technologies are gonna be able to do with that framework are at a whole nother level than if they're in like a walled sure. garden in a lab or something. Yeah, like yeah. It's, it's, it's co-evolving with us. With us. In it's, the it, physical space. Exactly. Yeah. It's no longer just an appendage that is, uh, we keep in our pockets and access just a couple times a day, uh, it's now a... Well, look at the trend of immersion. Right. The full-fledged, yeah. Exactly. And, so the immersive yeah. qualities of having it be layered in our space, whether AR or VR, you know, I mean, just, just that level of, of uh, further immersive power... Um, inches us closer to simulation theory. It does. It is. I mean, it is what it is. It's the layer within the layer and I also mean, the responsibility yeah. to kind of avoid the Orwellian cautionary tale. Correct. So this yeah. is another area that people are very concerned about. Correct. There's all these yes, gateways yes. and windows yes. of, of, uh, yes, yes, yes. of concern. And so we... Like who's actually having the hard discussions with the uh, brain-computer interface people on the planet um, with all of the 5G infrastructure that's going into place on the planet, the longitudinal health effects that these things may have, that how do we get a global discourse going on about synthetic biology's play in this, as well as uh, just the memetics that are going to be, who controls the substrate of where the memetics go directly into right. us and, you know, right. when, Jackson and yeah, the, when, yeah. and you know, with that flow of memetics, um, is who owns that? How do we engage with, with that on a, on a civil discourse, on a global discourse about what is considered best on progress towards that, that simulation? So the stewardship. We, we don't. We don't uh, have a civil dialogue. So eat, drink, and be married. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so there are many, many theories about who is controlling these things and, um, you know, kind of studying cultural theory, culture crafting. I think Adam Curtis is a great uh, place to, to kind of dig into some of that stuff about, you know, Century of the Self and Bernays and a lot of these kinds of, um, you know, strategies and, and um, systems of control that have been working through prior forms of media, uh, entertainment, pop culture. It's, of course, all programming systems and so on, right? Now, there's a lot of people that, that uh, almost feel like a kind of victimhood, I guess you could say, against the power structures that seem to be very powerfully or domin kind of dominating the, the, the filtration process of what you know, makes it out there. However, the internet, I, mean, I really loved, I was inspired by what Klee was saying on the show about how there's been thresholds of kind of openness that have been crossed where you can't really, we've just gone past certain, certain um, you know, censorship uh, thresholds, it seems, with the amount of freedom of information that seems to be available on the internet to whatever degree you may, you know, yeah, yeah. subscribe to that. So I think there's something that definitely happened there that there's more access, there's increasing access. Mm -hmm. And so there's other layers of emerging tech that have been coming through that seem to be along those lines that have to do with decentralization and um, yes. empowerment and disintermediation. Yes. And yes, yes. I think there's a lot of really beautiful hope and potential going on through those if, threads. If you combine versus how you're building out that spatial 
web infrastructure that if you combine that with decentralization we at are, its yeah. finest, yeah. yes, if it's combined decentralization at its finest, at its most pinnacle possibility, we're in good hands. Yeah. yeah, because then we're having really strong consensus protocols around decision making. You got it. Yeah, and then we can really figure out what codes we want to embed in the super intelligence. So, okay, so now let's, let's venture into the super intelligence more. So, so interesting, it's the 20th anniversary of the matrix. We're having this conversation and all the technologies just, again, we're talking about brain computer interfaces, indistinguishable virtual realities, mm. synthetic biology, all these crazy things. And wherever these things are gonna be in 20 years, it's gonna be a lot closer to making more people more aware of the possibility of simulation theory being true. Right. So we're catalyzing a, an awakening of simulation theory at the same time as the exponential and the medics. And the medics. Yeah. So, so uh, so, so, and this gets kind of crazy because on, on, as, a, as a civilization gets to this point of a, of a singularity, uh, to get to this point of creating their own simulations, mm -hmm. and embedding consciousness in them, and watching what evolves, and, and, and if that has felt experience, qualia, then mm -hmm. how is this already not just another version of that, mm -hmm. all the way down? Yeah, the turtles, yeah. The tur so yeah, so, so, so the, unpack this more for us. So what, wait, specifically Singularity, what? Singularity, simulations, all oh, the way kind down. Of like the, the descendant theory thing. Well, yeah. okay, so, the, so the, the, the simulations all the way down thing is interesting um, in that, again, it, it could be this, you know, there's a concern about the disembodied trajectory, but maybe that is how this works. Uh, there's also, like, um, Klee and, and, and others have been kind of, I'd love to have you mention this on your show as well, and there's, there's, we're doing an upcoming panel on descendant theory. Uh, which um, has come through a few different friends in our, our, our network, uh, Stan Stelnaker and Liana um, Sananda over at MAPS, and uh, Rack, myself, T. Ferry, Lisa. We're, we're going to be doing a panel on this with uh, Kelly at the Transpersonal Asso uh, Psych Association Conference coming up. Mm -hmm. So the idea about this is a kind of interesting, I don't know, variant of, of sim theory where it's almost like this iterative circular process that, you know, whether it be a big bang that, you know, kind of explodes things out into differentiation and then they sort of spin up in development. Yeah, yeah. To a point where then they start to uh, iterate within, like we're already iterating right now within this one. So you kind of get that fractal self similar recursion thing going on, mm -hmm. you know, the simulation within the simulation that we're talking about right now. And so then. So the spiral dynamics of a whole civilization. Evolving, Big Bang happens, civilization evolves, gets to super intelligence, creates another potential Big Bang that... And then, and then again, we have this, this sort of potential window where it's like subordinated in front of us, where we're kind of interfacing with it. Uh, again, bi-directional feedback and so on, obviously. But um, it's in an externalized form right now, right? Imagining that we are also already quantum computers, potentially like AI, uh, you know, in this, in this cycle, but like basically we, we would be sort of working on this uh, layer within, you could say, and we have a period of time to grow and develop in terms of what makes it through into these gateways of yes. what the AI, you know, ends up being sort of programmed with or what kind of, what kind of codes, you know. Yes, yes. Um, I think we're moving to this period from where we've, we've been tracking like genetic code, like there's physiosphere codes, there's genetic yeah. codes, obviously probably far more going on in that than we've been aware of, of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then memetics is yeah. another layer of coding. But then in the virtual now, we're also like getting this parallel where we're you know, potentially going to have more universal codes underneath things in the digital space, mm -hmm. kind of universal code substrates and so on. And also we're now in science seeing that there may be such a thing like the opening quote mm -hmm. in physics that there's quantum level codes that underwrite this. So again, layer within the layer and a window to kind of be working on the subordinate layer while it's mirroring and we're discovering more about the physical, you know, what's under, underlying quantum and the physical, yeah. the informational, essentially. And are we going to be able to integrate this in a way, like the descendant theory is sort of an idea that this is a cyclical iterative process, yeah. that like as this process develops and grows, it spins up and through into some kind of singularity, which then back simulates 
this whole process yes. in iterations and that there's emergent properties that like maybe one theory on the goal for this is that it's a filtering of both building on what's come before we can see this in evolutionary design patterns and structures now like evolutionary theory developmental theory and a lot of what Wilbur and others have been tracking in, in integral theory trying to integrate that but we see this, you know, like stabilizing force of areas of development, um, kind of, you know, syntropy almost, emergent th emergence theory, um, complexity theory, looking at yes. what emerges as development occurs versus like the entropy effect of dispersive kind of chaotic. So there's like yeah. entropy versus extropy or yeah. syntropy, right? Yeah. And as development occurs, there seem to be emergent properties that are not found on lower levels, and that that is sort of a, a kind of general heuristic of what's being sculpted by this, you know, inner outer reflexivity. You know, the process of of all of this densifying of information, um, and and novelty is a part of that. There's like this kind of novelty factor, but like novelty has to be harnessed by those entropy extropy forces into functional fit like evolutionary fit so that creates a stabilizing structure that can be built upon and then there's emergent properties that seem to be um, layering through that process as it as information becomes more dense uh, and more complex in each phase and so now that's what's happening again with this virtual phase this this kind of subordinate phase and what makes it through these gateways um, is a selection process yeah. that that in descendant theory is what also then back simulates the whole thing yeah. could be like big yes. bangs to singularities over and over again or an expand and collapse of you know in a kind of an eternal universe of you know the 3d realm there's two different ways to look at it so so crucial to make sure that what is being embedded into the super intelligence into the singularity simulation is, is what we want as if that you know comes again that we want it to be uh, embedded with the best codes. And another thing that I, I'm finding super fascinating about this is that if, if we can awaken more people to the possibility of, of, of seeing things from a big history perspective of Big Bang to planets and stars to evolution on rocks to intelligence evolving on those rocks and then to that intelligence passing off the torch to non-biological superintelligence, then that cyclical process is super fascinating, awakening, uh, awareness expanding, and I think it's very imaginative. The abstract, the amount of abstract thought that needs to, an imagination that needs to go into what that big history timeline is actually like is very important, I think, for all children that are born into the world to at least be aware of, mm. and they can figure out how much they want to dive into it or not. But just that little bit, it catalyzes a tremendous amount of awakening and gratitude to, to mm. life, mm -hmm. to, to even yes. being, yeah, yeah. And I think the religions were stewarding that, um, you know, in the kind of pre-rational phase, and there's been this sort of, you know, turf war conflict, as Wilbur's tracked this stuff so beautifully between the kind of pre-rational stages and each other, and then eventually the rational and postmodern. I think that the, 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 one of the great gifts of this, this, uh, this paradigm that the Wachowskis kind of in tandem with Wilbur transmitted was um, and is the, the potential to integrate these things in a way that uh, updates the values and, and the meaning and, and all the kind of, yes. the sort of, um, yeah, the stewardship of consciousness and humanity that, that, yes, it was being sort of, there's a bit of a competition amongst religions and so on, but then there's these Gnostic cores and, you know, you can look at like Campbell's work and Watts and many of these other luminaries that also contribute to, I think, integral theory in powerful ways. Um, that, that beautiful stewardship can now be kind of compatibly integrated with uh, all that we've been mapping through the scientific verifi verifiability uh, truth filtering that's required for yes. the efficacy of what we've been yes. um, been able to, to model and predict and like again that 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 whole nature of science in itself it, it the, it's a simulation function in itself the brain is a simulation machine like we're, we're seeing that kind of fractal yeah. um, self similarity all over the place in terms of what the nature of simulation really is yeah. these are and and to also address that 
whether it's biological or non-biological as it continues to develop, it, it could become biological again in that we could, as this process unfolds with the virtuality, it's like it could be this period where, again, it's sort of like disembodied a bit, mm -hmm. but it could, it, could, it could sort of synthesize and unify back into embodiment. The more that we crack the codes down into the genetic and you know, quantum substrates and so on, informational under, underlying everything, um, the more that it could be that our, com our computing um, systems evolve down into the biological. They are, DNA is the densest storage medium that we're aware of, right? So like we could end up as we're developing this or as this is developing mm -hmm. itself <laughs> mm -hmm. in many ways, it's gonna continue to grow this sort of metaverse, you know, virtual sphere or whatever. Um, it could be that it, that it evolves back into kind of some symbiotic, that could be part of this iteration process is that it, it maintains a biological basis, um, but yeah, may, yeah. may be highly advanced by the spins of what can occur through um, the disembodied aspects of it as well. I mean, we can look at right now, like just the computational power of machine computers and machines so far, it's, it's uh, very, very fast, but like simple processes, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. it's like yeah. calculators, right? They can like out, out compute mm -hmm. almost any human, yeah, yeah. but it's, it's a very like isolated domain of computation, whereas we are far more general. Mm -hmm. And you know, yeah, this is what yes. the whole general AI kind of yes, you yes. Know, thing is. It's biomimicry in a lot of ways, yes. but it's also gonna evolve us beyond what we are. So I think it's a tandem kind of oscillated Rhythm, rhythmic yeah. dance as it as it goes back to singularity or whatever it's going. Yeah, <laughs> source. The the, the uh, solution to what a, what people think is the Fermi paradox is could potentially be that civilizations when they re, when they reach the super intelligence threshold just go inward. That's and been something, yeah. Rather than the outward across the cosmos, trying to like talk yeah. to other ones, they just go inward and. Resimulate, and that begs the question as to whether so if it goes a disembodied trajectory where th you know things emanate let's say when we're navigating the the medicines or altered states or dreams collective unconscious all that we're somewhere in this kind of higher dimensional stack that's emanating down into 3d mm -hmm. and vibration and that this is a you know projection now the other way that's going to continue to to go into higher disembodied dimensionality and that there's going to be intelligences in that ecosystem that's another way that the circularity could be operating is that now it's, it just evolves out into higher dimensions of this virtual aspect of, you know, this kind of subordinate continuum, if you will. But then that also can advance all the way back up to potentially simulating, which circles back down into the three D thing. So that's another another ways that it could go totally disembodied, you know. Yeah. So when when we when we find ourselves born into this playground that is called Earth, and we start absorbing stimuli, analyzing our environment, trying to get the best codes. We're, we're ch one of the things that's so important is to really apply this Pareto principle to all, all that is. Mm. What is the 20% of information that you have to parse for and find that's going to give you 80% of the knowledge of reality? And, and, and how can we find those codes and make those the clearest codes for, peep, for seeds that are born into the world so they can understand those codes. It's a major principle of, of, of what, what we care about. And, and another, another aspect to that is that you're, we're constantly tweaking on our own development to level up for what we care about. Mm -hmm. You find meaning and purpose, align yourself mm -hmm. with it, and then you're leveling up. You're gonna experience mm -hmm. hard obstacles, mm -hmm. adversities, and that's the grit and perseverance mm -hmm. that gets you through um, knowing that you that is your meaning and purpose. And so aligning these things of finding these best codes, continuing to level up is kind of this, this game aspect. All right, you just hit on a sweet spot, I think, and it has to do with another area of, I think, fruit from this trans, ex expansion of transrationality to include the simulation paradigm in an actual a, like an expanded cartography model, like taking, you know, going beyond the, inter the current integral theory maps into this kind of meta simulation integral theory cartography. So this is what's so important to, to have been able to include the interior, what, what was being stewarded by these pre-rational religious or mm -hmm. um, 
um, religious, philosophical, uh, you know, the, the traditions that have been stewarding the interior, being able to make sure that that, so that's what, you know, the, this meaning carrying, right, the stewardship of meaning. What is all the data without the meaning of our subjective, you mm -hmm. know, the qualia mm -hmm. to, the, to the quanta? Mm -hmm. um, so I think this is an opportunity for us to, to, to reframe all of that interiority into something that can be more accessible and modernized and uh, begin to help instruct the refinement you're talking about. So yes. the, re the refinement of, of, of codes, right? That goes back to this kind of general metaphysical principle, I think, that goes way beyond just uh, physics, the way that we've been tracking you know, the, the principles of entropy and extropy, the developmental emergence, you know, complexity theory, all these kinds of things. I think are are actually metaphysical principles that you know we're seeing in that physiosphere layer. We can also see them at play in the biosphere, the new the new sphere. Like we can see these friction flow, entropy extropy kinds of you know um, governing dynamics. And I think I think that that kind of stuff is all all those principles are sort of sculpting this feedback between interior and exterior. And and this paradigm has potential for being able to. Um, to synthesize it again, right? To really unite the, the, the fruits of what has been carried uh, by these traditions and what is now being so powerfully and domin dom domineeringly sort of mapped and through modernity, industrialization, and so on. Um, I think this is one of them. I mean, like the, the, the integration codes are, are kind of like master heuristic for the harmonization and coherence of humanity at this time. And then also the, you know, what's, what's moving through us. I love how you said that it's, there's a process of sculpting that's occurring. It's sculpting. Yeah, it's so beautifully illustrated that way that, that as the Earth has been doing these countless orbits around the star, that there has been a process of sculpting from the single cell to multi cell to animal to human sculpting to super and development. Yeah. Sculpting and development. It's been orbiting, the sun's been orbiting. It's just been in the Milky Way, it's just been insane to see the sculpting occurring. And now when you find us here, it's up to us to embed the best codes in these final days of sculpting. Mm prior to the new simulations. Yes. And so it's become, if not the most important thing to do to have this conversation, to yeah. think about it, like well, how do we want to sculpt civilizations, code deployments yes. to the super intelligence? Yes, and if you look at the history of civilization, you can look at the competing ideologies as software. I mean, just look at it all as a big video game, right? Yes. This is yes. part of the power of how we can really China's running things. their own software, the U.S. is running their own software. Ideology is software. If, yeah. we, if you just start looking at the new sphere as a software system, software engineering, just translate everything into that, these kind of terms. So looking at these competitions of both you know, belief systems, you know, belief is very closely tied to ideology. Ideology is kind of like a, a, just like a, a, a rollout of a system emanating from an ethos and a belief, right? So these we have all these different kinds of competing belief systems that ideology springs from, and ideology is like the mobilization platform for it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Civilizational operating systems, as, such as governance systems, uh, national interests, and you know, all kinds of, you know, it's obviously evolved into the corporate, you know, kind of corporate nation states that are transnational and that are now sort of still very much influencing ideology. I mean, again, as it emanates down into the field of action for most people being mobilized by these things, ideology is the governing kind of software, and then media is a huge, you know, kind of uh, one of the probably dominant um, dissemination um, forums for all these things. Again, Adam Kurt is so fantastic. So much of his work is tracking all these different ideological threads and very much looking at it as software. So a lot of software is runaway software. Uh, there's, if, if, you, if you take a look at the amount of humans that are currently using uh, YouTube as their video platform, that those two billion humans will potentially become four billion humans using a single monopolic uh, business substrate for video. 
and there is Vimeo and there are some decentralized mm -hmm. options that are coming up, but it's become a runaway market share. Mm. And that is very, this becomes very interesting because we're talking about what memetics, what code is being embedded. How do you have someone that just starts up their video platform, try and compete with a video platform that already has two billion plus people using it? Maybe the way that code. the way that so the way that this can be leveraged is the way that you get something like Uber. So in emerging technologies, there's different waves. Just we we're talking about emerging like uh, evolutionary development in you know biology or, or you know any any other sphere. But looking at it here in terms of emerging tech, you have emergent properties that were not present in a prior wave of whether infrastructure, software, etc. So before we had this third wave of mobile. Uh, GPS's and app stores and all these things, you didn't have the sort of substrate layer for there to be something like an Uber but or Netflix or yeah. whatever, right? Yeah. So like once once you get these infrastructure layers, that's how a Netflix can unseat a blockbuster. Yes. If yes. you ride that wave, right? If you're able to ride that wave. Interesting. There's going to be new innovations that could obsolete the old That ones. can take out, that can, well, I mean, it, it, at least compete. It doesn't at necessarily have to take it out, but yeah. that, that, this, is a, this is part of these gateways and windows right, that we're talking right. about where there's opportunities. And if we have some kind of hope that we're not just inevitably on an Orwellian trajectory, um, maybe we've threaded this thing in a certain way or it has been threaded or designed itself in a certain way to require there to be puzzle pieces that have to come through these gateways so that it doesn't destabilize. There might, that's a very kind of almost, yeah. you know, kind of woo-woo or religious yes. uh, sense of intelligent design behind this thing, but like you could also, you know, depersonify it with it being just an iterative process of some kind or whatever that's improving itself. And we find that yes. there is the need yes. for stabilization in order for things to continue to occur. And, and the need for competition for the code to constantly be stressed and updated with what's potentially exactly. better. Yes, yes. So there are certain things like, whether it be principles of decentralization or you know, other areas of emerging technology where we have these kind of new windows that are coming. I mean, we still have people that are finding ways to leverage you know, prior uh, waves. But um, you know, this is the kind of stuff that we're very excited about with uh, the spatial web with versus with with uh, many of the different companies we're working with in in the emerging tech space right now is um, being able to yeah kind of help steward the process a bit with uh, a bit more democratization of the ideas that can come in and, and write those yes ways. yes the, one of the best way one of the best ways to update the code that we're going to embed into super intelligence is to make it uh, make it m more frictionless for ideas for memetics to to compete with one another in the marketplace. You got it. Yeah, yeah. That way we can figure out what what is actually best across like that consensus. That and consensus. so the, we're gonna we're gonna be working on ways for there to be. Just as our system has been able to very. Interestingly, you know, there's some ways that we got to give some serious credit to like the quality of life improvement in many ways. You know, comparing now to many years ago. So however much we might get wrapped up in like control schemes and, you know, the, the sort of uh, monopolization or domina domination of, you know, areas of our media or something like this, we, we also have an incredible um, quality of life improvement yeah. as this developmental process has occurred. And um, some of this rests on economic factors and gamification and so on. And we can, we can harness these principles alongside democratization and, and greater access and create incentive structures and, and really harness, you know, beautiful uh, expansions of economics like tokenization and tokenomic, uh, you know, gamifying tokenomic systems that, um, it, you know, it, what, what we're talking about underneath all of the mechanics of how this works is like being able to get different kinds of value internalized into our, yeah. into our economy. We, we're dealing with so many externalizations like externalities of, you know, not just climate impact, but of the interior yeah. um, that is being mined, right? So whether we have extractive mining going on with our, our planetary resources that is backfiring, you know, the impacts of it are backfiring and we're seeing the destabilization mm -hmm. in those areas. We're seeing the same thing with collateral impacts of the attention mining of consciousness, the interior. So uh, this is only amplifying the more immersive this gets and we have an opportunity to leverage a lot of these kind of emerging blueprints to um, 
to harmonize these things. I mean, that's that's really I think a lot of a lot of the the goal here is you know some people even get triggered by uh, this evolving virtuality because they see the impacts of it. It's like you know people seeing how technology seems to be a driving force that is both kind of impacting the environment and our interior consciousness. And yeah, yeah. those that are very focused on embodiment and health and the physical 3D, yeah. which I greatly appreciate. I mean, we yes. need those voices to be in all these rooms and I'm so grateful to people like Jamie Wheel and, yeah, yeah. and others that are, yeah. you know, kind of tugging our, our kind of, you know, maintaining the stability and harmony on, on these areas because it's true. They are in their excesses and polarizations. They are they are impacting other areas of our being and our and our planet and so on. So, um, well, colors on a color wheel in terms of our role in the in the game. So, orange does a certain action, blue does a certain action, red, yellow, they all do certain actions. Some is just engaging on a one-on-one -on -one level, making an impact on a butterfly effect. For one person. Mm -hmm. Some is these moonshot eight billion person impact ideas, and all the spectrum in between. Yeah, and and just this principle of harmonizing and uh, really including the heart and the, 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 the amazing systems that have already arisen yeah. in their design. Yes. And uh, including all of this stuff and, 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 and layering it and integrating it and having it all work together and serve like the whole system, bottom up, the whole thing, rather than being, you know, we've been impacted by this phase where computation has had us leaning over into, you know, crazy yeah. ergonomics and, you know, staring at screens and all that. Well. The spatial web, we, I mean, we've got this really incredible opportunity with, with what we're doing with the infrastructure of the spatial web, AR. AR holds a lot of potential for the, the, a, a whole new integrated approach to what we experience computing to be. Now, we've yeah. got to get out of this, like, you know, we're working on how to continue to serve and meet the system where it's at with, however, we have this extracted mining imperative that's going on that's constantly you know, mining our attention, mining our, you know, it's, it's really sucking consciousness up and, and impacting the heck out of it. And so we're, we're really working on how to, um, there are some incredible blueprints coming through for how to balance, like both catering to those levels while, while stabilize, you know, in some in sort of like a stabilizing factor because they were kind of more fundamental, but then also yeah, like, like just harmonizing um, our relationship to, to the whole system, basically. So it's the whole system of all that is. Yeah. Yeah, and, and one of the most powerful tactics to do that is a process of, of meditation, of inward reflection, of self-practice, um, and self-work, and... And, and, um, and that's got to yeah. be internalized into the external model. Yes. Like, that's where, like, yes. you know, we have to have the embodied practice. We have to have that whole side that is kind of you know subjective instead of extracted mining it's it's sort of investing and growing in yes. the subjective yes. side yes. but then that has to be internalized into our economic models in some Correct. way and gamified yes, to incentivize it Correct. right because yes. then you get these whole systems where you know you gotta you gotta give some credit to these you know facebook's and google's and so on with the way that they're really integrating mindfulness into their daily they've got you know yoga and this they're, they're you know mm -hmm for all the impacts that we see the casino style, you know, Tristan yeah, yeah, Harris yeah. kind of critique of, it's true, but there are also ways that, that people are in these, even in these systems that are, they're seeing the value of, of growing, growing us up in a healthier way. And so yeah, it's, yeah. the codes are percolating, they're, they are. they're moving around. Yeah, they're being updated and, and over time, and it's up to us to be able to determine um, which ones we want to write and deploy and uh, put into the marketplace and have people vote on them. and. This is, a, this is a very exciting time. You know, our, our, our questions that we usually ask on the show have been pretty much answered uh, by you already. <laughs> like we ask, are we alone in the cosmos? And if we're that's in a right. simulation. Yes, those questions, and that's the topic. This topic of this show. <laughs> that's what we're. Um, there's, there's, there's probably um, important to, you know, hear your thoughts a bit. You, you started telling us a bit about this, like, densifying. Well, one, one thing I could offer, yeah. if, if it's okay, would be yeah. a little bit of autobiographical information as to how I yeah. arrived at some of this stuff. Yeah, well, the 15 years of, of simulation to screen is, that's a huge part of, of this, because this gave you a really abstract way of realizing that you can do visual effects that get people to consume memetics at unprecedented 
rates of awareness expansion. That's a big one. But yeah, give us sure. give us that. Give I us mean, that I, autobiographical background. Yeah, I mean, with a, how much time do we have? Yeah, give, give us the. Just a little bit. Okay. Yeah, give us a. Version. So I mean, I kind of started off as an artist originally, and um, my grandfather worked at Hughes Aircraft uh, doing moon missions. I mean, he was a rocket scientist and retired early and kind of started tutoring me with computers. So from a very young age, I was tearing them apart and programming. And so this kind of art and tech yes. side kind of co-developed. And then the great simulation spectacle of cinema was just this you know, huge um, you know, draw for me constantly. So all these things came together again in this field of visual effects. And um, that just kind of, you know, that, that became sort of the, the, the main pursuit for quite a long time, which was focusing on the full spectrum from art through the sciences and, and all the technical sides and having to kind of learn and supervise all the different angles of all of it, kind of as a generalist and supervisor and uh, times producer in the, in the business side as well. So I, it was a big ingestion period of how to simulate anything and learning about how all of this works to simulate it to screen. Yeah, yeah. And um, so I was a bit like almost even kind of out of balance in that phase in terms of my interior. I was very focused on that outer, um, you know, kind of recursive magic, which it really, you know, is a magic. And, uh, and then in time, um, just on, my, on the personal side for me, I think the, the interior and the, per, the sort of, when we're talking about those meaning systems, I was always studying philosophy and psychology and, and religion and all these things were always uh, just almost compulsive, obsess obsessive compulsive uh, fascinations and I was always studying them but I wasn't in deep practice and uh, it took a lot of uh, what I call the shadow teachers, the illnesses, traumas and fears yeah. to kind of uh, force my force me out of hibernation and you know in the, in the matrix you could say yeah, yeah. into um into the, the work of the plant medicines and so then that you know breaks open this whole other realm of navigation uh through first person experience which i think is hugely Huge. important yes yes and, yes. A, and a massive and i just want to give some credit and like deep bow to all the traditions that have been carrying out this work and to those that have been trying to help uh, you know, MAPS and all these other organizations I'm so grateful to be working with and um, like Tibetan Buddhist meditation practices all, all the traditions that, yeah. are these, yeah. that, are, that are carrying these that are carrying that thousands through. of years I mean I look at this stuff work, yeah. exactly and yeah. it's and that is all a master epigenetic teacher to, to yes, pupil the lineages, process absolutely the lineages, yeah so now I have you know I've always studied them but now I'm in a whole other area of kind of practice and again the the, comp, the subjective computation of what has to go through embodiment and uh, to then I think really make it in, through that filtration system through all the layers of meaning and uh, you know the kind of computation that is what we are uh, embodied and to have that you know healing and growth that I've experienced in my own life um, from a lot of these other kinds of impacts of areas of the matrix that you know we all we all navigate, um, that is a reharmonization of my own trajectory that then filters through into this other work that we're doing. And I feel like the democratization of that is also a really important imperative yeah. at this time. And so, just wanted to kind of do a deep bow to to all those working in these areas. And yeah, huge deep bow to that, and also to you because this is you you're giving us your autobiography and it's really explains how you got to where you are today quite well it's the, that that the blend of those stimuli get you to yeah where you're at right now and and you bow to you to verses and to what is going on right now with the awakening towards the codes and what we're embedding into super intelligence for round two on the on the on what exists beyond the 3D reality, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the higher dimensional layers of the game. Yeah, yeah. Give us a little taste at that, and then we'll cover it on the on the second round. Well, again, I think some of that goes back to the transpersonal realms and uh, collective unconscious. You know, those were the the lineages that uh, that we just talked about that the religions were holding and carrying, and uh, many others are also um, experiencing all kinds of things in this sort of supernatural area, uh, you could say, that I think will be given a bit more, um, again, as we translate these things from either pre-rational or hyper-dimensional you know, into the kind of more hyper-dimensional um, 
technological kind of game lens, right? Like if we're looking at it like as a bit of a video game and we can see the efficacious nature of that and it's showing itself uh, you know, through our sciences and what can be verified as, as, uh, as actually reflecting the fabric of reality and when in way that, the way that this, that this game is uh, architected and constructed and, and designed, etc. Um, that the illumination through these medicine experiences, maybe that's another way to look at it, is uh, there's many different modalities and uh, the, the plant medicines can be one of the most powerful. Uh, there are many others, but um, the, enthe the entheogens, I think, are a very powerful way to access uh, in the right containers, in the right, you know, contexts. And um, I, think, I think that gateway is a, a huge eye-opener for people. And again, it's necessary. It's, it's part of the shift. There's the exterior paradigm of, you know, these things like integral theory and simulation theories being these, these outer exterior mapping systems and paradigms that, that we can work with and, and frame but we need to ex experience them. Like this is part of one of the things that has happened through um, you know, periods of extreme orthodoxy and like the political nature of religions and how they became these very political empires and so on is the mediation, centralization and mediation, having to take someone else's word for something um, has become you know, something that I think like you know, those that are now in this phase that are you know, extreme cr vocal critics of those kinds of heuristics of the pre-rational phases, like folks like Sam Harris and others, they're really you know, continuing to hammer away at um, those aspects of the orthodoxy of the pre-rational religions that anything should be kind of taken uh, on faith or that there should be uh, anything that, that uh, truth claims that are, um, that are not directly observable. And this is where the medicines really open that up for a lot of people to be able to navigate and I, I look forward to seeing more yes. of those very illuminated minds being able to access these realms and uh, and report back yes yes this w whatever is happening beyond the 3d reality is a very exciting conversation to be able to unpack on a on a future uh, conversation together as well as as well as as you as you gave us a little hint at the what are the uses of, of, of psychedelics in this process of understanding what exists beyond the three D, what are the codes that we want to understand about what exists beyond three D, what are we going to embed in the super intelligence, so so much good stuff in in the first time that we were able to sit down together on the show and and discuss. You did an incredible job of helping me filter yeah. way too much information yeah, into yeah. my field down to. A comprehensive yes. package. We we spent we spent two hours <laughs> synthesizing what was like, like a couple hundred words into just like twenty five to thirty and bullet that points. bullet points that helped us be able to break this down into phase one, phase two, round one, round two, round three, etc. Um, potentially bringing on other guests to be unpacking this this simulation theory and all of the good stuff that that came along with it. Ryan, thanks a lot for coming on to the show. I, we, we usually ask at least, the, at least the question that you haven't answered is what's the most beautiful thing in the world? What's the most beautiful thing in the world? The all-seeing eye. So the subjective eye. Mm -hmm. The eye within every one of us. That is all one eye. Mm -hmm. So not... You know, just that eye, but the eye. <laughs> yeah. So that witness. Interesting. Yeah, the witness of the eye, the self, but also the witness of the collective um, of all that which is. Which is looking out within every eye. Eye, yeah. Is the all-seeing yeah. eye. Yeah. Very beautiful. And all the, you know, phantasmagoric uh, novelty and emergent beauty that it beholds is also inseparable, but I would go all the way to the eye. <laughs> yeah. The great witness observer. I love it. I'm very excited for our continued conversations <laughs> and shows. Ryan, thanks super much. Thank you so much, much for thank having you. me. Yeah. Thank you for all the good work you're doing. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Yes. Yes. And thanks everyone for tuning in. We greatly appreciate you tuning in. We would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Let us know what you thought about this episode. Let us know what you think about Ryan's work. You can check out all those links below to Ryan's work. 
Also, go and build the future, everyone. Manifest your dreams into the world. Support the artists and entrepreneurs that you believe in. And support Simulation. Our links are below as well. Huge shout out to Ron Vargas, our producer and director, for producing this episode. And we love you very much, and we will see you soon. Peace.